Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this weekly ag weather update brought to you by Ag Carolina Farm Credit. Well, I want to show you this animation put together uh, by the National Hurricane Center showing you here where the track of Florence was forecast over the last few weeks. Yeah, we've been talking about this one for a long time, and I imagine a lot of you have some Florence fatigue here. But what I want to point out is how well the National Hurricane Center did by uh, when, it, when it came to forecasting the potential track of this system. It was very impressive that they had this level of skill predicting where it was going to go. Well, when it all was said and done here in the coastal regions of North and South Carolina, we put down an enormous amount of precipitation. Now, just so you can see this better, my 10 inch color starts right there. So when you're thinking about the total amount of precipitation that has fallen over the last three days alone, we have a huge section, a huge section of North Carolina that received well over 10 inches of rainfall. And uh, that amount of rain has caused some catastrophic flooding. And the river systems are flooding right now, and it is not done. We have several more days of this flooding to deal with. And that's because even though the precipitation will be leaving, it will be the, the flow out of the mountains. It'll be the flow in the streams, kind of getting uh, out, of the, out of the soil into the streams, causing them to crest here in the next few days. So the flooding threat continues even after this enormous amount of rainfall uh, kind of subsides here. Now, as we kind of take a look at one location, I'm going to show you the Newport Moorhead City Weather Forecasting Office. When you look at this, they saw over 30 inches of rainfall making this the wettest year on record for that particular region at almost 80 inches of rain accumulating so far since January 1st. It has been exceptionally, exceptionally wet because of Florence. So what I got in the background here is a map put together by the National Weather Service. And what it is showing you is maximum rainfall caused by a tropical cyclone or the remnants of a tropical cyclone since 1950 per state. And what I want you to see right now is North Carolina, the new record setter is Florence at nearly 34 inches of rainfall. Incredible to see that. Now, a neat thing I'm going to be teaching my students this week at the University of Illinois about Florence is this. You see behind Florence, do you see this cool kind of tongue of water right in through there? We call that a cold water wake. This is basically where the hurricane extracts a lot of heat from the ocean surface and then churns up a lot of cool water from below. And that cool water wake is important because that means any would-be tropical system that tried to follow Florence would have to deal with the fact that Florence kind of took all of the heat out of the ocean, therefore limiting the strength of any potential system that would follow it. But when we step back and watch this animation of Florence here, this is incredible. Florence made landfall here as a strong Category 1 strength storm, but it stopped and stalled right there on the coast, bringing this continual lashing of, of, of rain bands over the same location, causing such incredible amounts of flooding. Uh, we lost uh, some of the power to some of the radars for a while there, but thankfully we have enough radar coverage in the Carolinas to get this great animation here as Florence transitions to be post-tropical. Now, as we get into the day on Monday, we're watching a large region where we have flood watches and flash flood watches. So the flooding threat is not done. As the rain continues to go into the Appalachian Mountains, we're going to continue to have our river systems being swollen uh, and, and, and flooding their banks. And this is going to persist for several days as that moisture gets out of the soil, into the rivers, and back into the ocean. So if we kind of animate out the next few days here, getting us to 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning, we can see where the remnants of Florence are going to go. So we're still dealing with, in the day on Monday, uh, and possibly even a little bit on Tuesday, the rain bands still wrap around Florence, getting into parts of North Carolina there. So we're not done. We're talking another two to four inches in some locations, maybe even much more as we get into the Appalachian Mountains before this gets up into Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York. So we're still dealing with quite a bit more. Now, what is interesting about Florence is this. There will be an upper level trough, I'm trying to draw it in for you here, that's going to be moving in out of the Great Lakes states. And we're hoping that that grabs Florence and shoves it on out into the open North Atlantic. There is a scenario where this upper level ridge builds in behind that trough and the clockwise flow around it could grab the remnants of Florence and bring it right back out into the kind of mid-Atlantic there, uh, potentially causing some well, possibly some more problems if that gets wrapped around in that direction. Now, low probability of this occurring, but we are starting to see some of the model runs hint at that, which means we're going to have to watch this carefully over the next, still over the next 72 to, to 84 hours here as we move forward. 
Now, just so you don't feel like you're the only location that has seen uh, so much uh, tropical uh, cyclone activity, this is Mancut. This went through Hong Kong uh, over the weekend, a powerful super typhoon just destroying things in another part of the world. So I thought I would at least show you that you're not the only ones that are suffering through some powerful tropical cyclones right now. Now, here's the good news. Behind Florence... This particular region here out in the open Atlantic is quiet. The tropical convection you see here is not forecast to organize into anything. And the remnants of Isaac, which I'm circling right in through here, have a low probability of continuing to form into something that we need to be worried about. But I'll still keep an eye on this if it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. So things have quieted down, uh, you know, at least in the near term in the tropics. So I want to show you something else. I want to show you where the focus is going to be this week in terms of weather. Now, what you're looking at here is a map valid at uh, 7 a.m. on Monday morning. And what you're seeing is precipitable water. That's the amount of water in the atmosphere that can be rained out. And what you'd notice here is that Florence is clearly dominating the picture. But if we get rid of these warmer colors and move into the cooler colors, this is drier air, the cooler colors, while the warmer colors here represent wetter than average air. And as I animate this forward, you're going to see a shift into where all that moisture is going to go. So for example, if I, if I get you out here to next weekend, we can see the big return of moisture into the middle part of the country where maybe most of this week we have near average to drier than average conditions across the Carolinas. We can certainly see that that may be the case holding on for quite some time. Now, why is that the case? Well, let's see what it does first. What we see here as we animate things out, let me step you back, is the remnants of Flor Florence on Monday into Tuesday still kind of possibly bring the chances of showers and storms down to the Carolinas. But once we get through the day on Tuesday, watch this. Just kind of keep your eye there on North and South Carolina. You see, as I get through Wednesday into Thursday into Friday, higher atmospheric pressure dominates this area, which means we have a sunny and dry into the week. It may not be until next weekend that we get the chance for some storms moving through as a front sags in through this area, maybe not even until the start of next week. So you're going to have to deal with the precipitation at the start of the week, but then hopefully at the end of it, things dry out. Here's what it looks like in terms of 24-hour rainfall getting you all the way through next Monday. Let me play that for you again. What we see is there's the remnants of Florence going away several days, hopefully here where things are drier than average. Uh, and, and that could be a nicer week as, as we kind of plan forward. So if we put it all together here, we can look at two different model runs of this. All the rain you're seeing here in North Carolina, this is what's coming in on Sunday night, Monday morning, moving out by Tuesday. So after that, things start to clear out. And we can see that possibly higher atmospheric pressure means drier than average conditions moving in. We're just kind of doing a multi-model comparison here. European model on the left and U.S. model on the right. So I'm hoping that we're going to have a dry uh, you know, second half of this week, maybe even getting us through next weekend. Now, what's the overall pattern of the atmosphere doing? Let's take a look at this. As we animate things forward... What we're going to notice here is that we tend to build in a pretty substantial ridge midweek, and that is what gets us warmer and drier as we move toward the end of this week. What will be interesting to see is that once we get into Friday and Saturday, what does the dominance of that ridge look like? You can clearly see here that through the weekend, the ridge dominates things, which helps me make a forecast say hey, drier than average and warmer than average. But we will be watching toward the end of the weekend and start of next week, this upper level trough in here, possibly dragging a front right across the Carolinas, giving us our next significant chance of precipitation. What you will see in the forecast is this. Now I'm stretching this out pretty far here, but I've got you all the way out until uh, a 10 day forecast. So this is not this coming Wednesday, but next Wednesday. What do we see here? We tend to see a trough way out in the west and a big broad ridge across much of the eastern half of this country. And that tends to keep us warmer than average here in the short term. And it also tends to keep us uh, hopefully a little bit drier than average as well. Now, if I take a look at what temperature anomalies are going to do, watch this. As we animate forward, what you generally see because of that ridge is warmer than average conditions until we get that front that might possibly sneak through, you know, uh, early, early next week. But overall, we're going to tend to keep near average to warmer than average temperatures because of the position of that ridge. And my question is, does that ridge have staying power? So as we wrap up this video, I want to show you all the way out to the beginning of October. You see, we are seeing a bit of change uh, in the overall pattern, and that is up until, you know, the end of September, beginning of October, where I'm drawing this line, we've had a pretty large ridge. Now, what do we see by the time we start October? 
a trough developing. Now, if that happens, that tends to push a ridge over the western United States right in through here, which could allow for a Great Lakes to the northeast trough to develop in this area. And what would that mean for the Carolinas? Well, that would mean maybe a more active pattern, and it could also mean a bit of a cooler pattern for the states I'm circling in there compared to what you've recently experienced. Is this calling for a major cold air outbreak? No, 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 no. Just a possibility of a cool down. So when we think about what that means for all of the ag we have going on in the Carolinas, well, we'll wrap it up by saying this. At least the next week looks decent after uh, Florence gets out of there. Looking a bit longer term, we do keep the warmer pattern, but we'll have to watch for a pattern shift by the time we get into the month of October. So a lot to take in there. I hope everyone has stayed safe through this incredible landfalling hurricane, and I hope that over the next few days, the floodwaters recede, but please be careful in the meantime. And with that, I'll go ahead and wrap up this forecast video. We at Ag Carolina, thank you for your attention. Hope you look forward to our next update coming out next week. Thank you.